This is Channel 5 News in the headlines. Two trade unions invited to another round of salary negotiations with government. Parliamentary opposition interested in marijuana as an economic development tool for the country and tourism authorities target a 5% growth for the next Tory season. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. Welcome back. The executive of the Police Welfare Association is going into its next meeting with government's negotiating team, confident that its revised proposal for salary increases will be accepted. Chairman of the PWA, Corporal Jefferson Drago, says there's a renewed spirit within the membership of the association. The executive of PWA has planned to update its members following Friday afternoon's meeting with government's negotiating team. What the membership is saying, give us 50% of our salary for 12 months in the first year. Give us 4% for the second year and 3% for the final year. So we are coming with an open mind and we are very hopeful that government this time around, this time again, will move. Trade unions are negotiating with government for salary increases and other work benefits for the 2015 to 2018 period. As you could recall, the last time we met government offered for the first year one-time payment of half of us, 50% of our salary for the first year. Um, and they offered us, for the third year, they offered us a 3%. Um, that the membership um, rejected. And of course, the executive also rejected that. So we go to them on Friday, very hopeful that um, better things will come. And what we ask them to do, they, they, they attempted to divorce um, salary negotiations from the allowances and so on and we say no when you're coming to the table tomorrow or on Friday please come with everything come with a total package police officers are also expecting a back pay which has been due to them according to Drago for two years true funny in fact what government is trying to do is to avoid giving police a retroactive so by putting the three percent in the final year they will not give us a retroactive. Remember, we must get a retroactive. We have been waiting in the wilderness for our money for two years. So it's only fair, it's only fit that we receive compensation for that in the form of retroactive. So we are waiting and we are hopeful and we are confident that government will give, in not all, but most of what we are requesting. General Secretary of the Public Service Union remains optimistic that negotiations with government will yield positive results. Andrea Louis has that story. The country's largest trade union is preparing to enter another round of negotiations with government's negotiating team on Thursday. In April, a public consultation was held on the state of the economy with various public and private sector stakeholders. However, the DPSU did not attend, stating that they were waiting for private discussions with government to continue. The last time the two sides had met, the PSU, which is demanding a 15% wage increase, had refused the government's offer for the 2015-2018 triennium. Well, in terms of our negotiations, we have a meeting scheduled this Thursday at 2.30. And uh, the last time we met with the government, we told him that we were not accepting government's offer, which was a salary freeze for the first year, a one-time payment of half a month's salary for the second year, and 3% salary increase for the third year. We made it clear that we were not accepting. We met with our members, and that um, position was endorsed. So when we meet with them on Thursday, we will again indicate to them, and we will expect that they will have made some improvement to what was being offered 
and when we sit there if we see that it makes sense we too can review our, our, our position. During a PSU press conference in April, President of the Union, Steve Joseph, said that negotiations for the next triennium should have already begun. However, later says this will be the focus as soon as negotiations on the current triennium are completed. As we conclude negotiations for 2015 2018, we will put things in place for 2018 2021, yes. In other news, a member of parliament for the Roseau Central constituency, Joseph Isaac, believes the time is now for making marijuana a central part to the economic and social development of Dominica. He called for a bipartisan discussion on the matter. We would like the Dominican public and the current administration, as the Labour Party administration, to look at marijuana, the marijuana industry, as an economic development strategy, bearing in mind that we can look at it in two different ways. One, we can look at marijuana in regards to the development of industry, where we can look at marijuana oil for exports. We could also look at medical use of marijuana and do significant research and development. I would like to remind the public that in the United Workers' Party manifesto, we had a clear policy in regards to marijuana. We also want to also recognize the use of marijuana by religious group, that's the Rastafari movement. We are also saying that we should consider that. Isaac said that the limited opportunity currently exists for producing a so-called Nature Island brand of marijuana. Jamaica have already done and moved ahead and taking a bold step in terms of marijuana and, and the marijuana industry development. But again, I wanted to point out something too. In regards to the marijuana, why I'm pushing it so aggressively? And I'm pushing it as a Dominican, not just necessarily as a member of United Workers' Party. Because if you don't come on board early, you will lose the privilege of being able to brand a nature aisle type of marijuana industry or product for example, as I said, the oil, the rope, different types of things. Research has been done on it. So we need to look at the potential, the economic potential of marijuana. A local government leader wants the future of the local government system to include better educated councillors. Chairman of the Atkinson Village Council, Paul Barron, told Channel 5 News that local government reform should consider paying councillors for work done. Councils also operate on a voluntary basis, although I think that what is done uh, in terms of the work that they have to push out, in, uh, it, it is largely and should not be considered to be voluntarism over time. And I really want the council, um, I really want the reform to seek to address that, you know, um, in the sense that if you uh, recognize the value that each councillor or chair is bringing to the, to the table, um, then they have to be um, equally rewarded in order to do so. Barron is of the view that greater collaboration between councils and central government can reap greater rewards for communities. He also believes that capacity building for councillors is a plus. As far as uh, in terms of capacity building, it would, be, it would make sense and I'm, I'm almost sure that UE has something coming on board soon that comes. I'd like to see councils a bit more um, knowledgeable of, of the laws that governs the, the local government authority. I'd like them to be equipped with certificates and degrees. You know, education is paramount to, to the development of any mind, any mind, young or old. So I really like, I would like to see that counselors undergo some form of a certificate program, you know, a diploma, if any. And they can use that because if you, if you operate at that level, you can find yourself mob mobilized or, or sort of moving for different parts of government and you can work in different ministries, therefore, because the experience you have at that level is rich. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the latest projections for the 2017-2018 tourist season. Stay with us. Thanks for staying tuned. Tourism authorities have projected a 5% growth for the tourism industry for 2017-2018. 
Chief Executive Officer of Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, says we're into month two of the second quarter of the tourist season, and this traditionally has been the slowest period for the country. Piper, who's also the tourism director, is however optimistic the performance will pick up. And as you know, in 2014, uh, 2015, we were on par to meet the numbers of realized in 2014, and of course, Tropical Storm Erica. And so what you see into 2015 is really the impact from August 27 through the end of the year. You know, through, uh, and also then into 2016, still the after effects. But you can see in 2016, we're up just shy of 5%. And our projection is for the next year to try to be up 5% as well. 2006 remains the best year for stay-over arrivals, looking back on the performance of the tourism industry over a 10-year period. One of the factors contributing to that success was the production of Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest on island. We had Caribbean Star, we had Caribbean Sun, we had Liat. I mean, you could decide, you know, if you were in Antigua or Barbados at 4 o'clock on a Friday that you wanted to come to Dominica and run to the airport and at 5.30 be on a flight, you know, so air access was great and there was a lot of things happening. So 2006 was a great year and it continues to be the year by which we judge all of our um, performances. In related news, Tourism Minister Senator Robert Tong is convinced Dominica is moving in the right direction as it relates to cruise arrivals. While reviewing the 2016-2017 cruise season, which ended in April, Tong noted that there has been a 4.9% increase in cruise tourist arrivals to the island. We see a 4.9% increase in terms of cruise. We also see other positive um, signs with regards to cruise. We had 278,000 people. Um, and that's why I'm saying, let us think of the positive. Let us stop thinking of the negative. So we had 270,000 people. Yes, we wanted, we expected 310. However, we've done the work. We've spoken to all of the cruise lines to ensure that they're coming and they have confirmed that they're coming. And you're looking for 2017, 2018, 100,000 visitor person increase. So that is a significant amount of individuals who will be coming to Dominica. Since a 2015 survey on Dominica's cruise tourism by the Business Research and Economic Advisors resulted in a failing grid, tourism authorities have responded by implementing certain measures. So when you go to the cruise lines, they have a list of about maybe 16, 17 things that they rate you on. And the important thing is to see how we can get our score up. And our scores are going up because we're doing the right things. We use the Brio report as our, as our guideline to ensure that um, where are the areas that we're weak at and how we can improve on those areas. One of those big areas that we had very bad scores were the, um, the cleanliness of the city. And I can say today the city is a lot cleaner than it was before. We still have more work to do. We're trending back in the right direction. But all of the issues that we've had, we cannot afford to make those same mistakes again. We have to ensure that there's no more overcrowding. We have to ensure that the, everybody gives the visitors the best possible service. Because if you don't do that and things get more chaotic, then the, the visitors will have um, bad um, reports and they will eventually not want to come back to Dominica. A major feat for the 2017-2018 cruise season is the return of Carnival Cruise Lines. We know it takes two years for a cruise line to change the itinerary. Everybody has been, well, the average individual loves, one day here of Carnival Cruise Lines, they get very excited. And I can say to you, we have been quoting Carnival Cruise Lines, but you can, only, you can only say the good things so many times. They do their checks to make sure we're moving in the right direction. You will have a few Carnival Cruise Line ships um, um, this season, if I remember correctly. But more importantly, come 2018, Carnival will be here in the summer season, which means that persons who depend on the cruise lines will no longer have a very short season away from October to April. It means it will be a longer season, thus increasing um, economic activity and the ability for them to make money. So we are moving in the right direction. 
In more news, campaign finance reform is being echoed by the opposition United Workers' Party as it renews calls for an improved system for voting. The UWP held a news conference on Tuesday afternoon also calling for recommendations from independent observer missions that monitored the 2009 and 2014 general elections to be implemented. The United Workers' Party calls for campaign finance reform. The United Workers' Party calls for, at the very least, declaration of campaign contributions and election campaign spending by, the, by any political party of no more than EC $30 per registered voter per election. Meantime, Luge noted that based on statistics, there was an unusually high number of people on the voters list for the 2014 general elections. And whereas Dominica's overall population continues to decline due to migration, we see an astonishing reverse in the number of registered voters. In the 2000 general election, we had 60,266 voters. In 2005, 65,889 voters. In the 2009 election, we had 67,000 223 voters, and in the last election, 2014, we had 72,533 voters. So effectively, what we see in Dominica is that the overall population and the number of registered electors are just about the same. And in this final item, we share a light moment with you as Member of Parliament, Raven Blackmore, is boasting that his constituency is the best. Blackmore made the statement while he hosted over 100 mothers from his Maho constituency at a lunch on Sunday at the Masak Basketball Court. He recognized the six mothers who have supported him from his inception into active politics. And to continue to express my gratitude and, um, for, for, for the support so far. I think um, the world would have been impossible without our mothers. And I think that we owe it to our mothers and as the Member of Parliament for the Best Constituency. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, contestant for the Dominica Olympic Committee presidency position, Billy Doctorow, says he hopes to bring positive change to the body's leadership should he be elected. His comments come ahead of the DOC's elections carded for Thursday. I will bring a different style of leadership to the DOC. It will be non-confrontational, more inclusive, and much more transparent. And I will definitely be much less hostile abusive and aggressive towards our sportsmen and women. I will not be calling anyone foolish, that's for sure, as my opponent did recently. I will attempt to provide increased support to the associations, the kind of support that they have been clamoring for in the past without success. But possibly the most urgent and most important task I know that I face is to find a way of regaining, and in many cases, gaining the public support and confidence of the DOC. If a simple survey is conducted of the Dominican populace, you will find a large majority of them will be, will be of the opinion that the DOC executive is made up of a bunch of undesirables who do not care about the true development of sports, but that of their own well-being. So this opinion of the public towards the DOC has to change as we need the public support going forward. But this can only be done and achieved by providing responsible, honest, and strong leadership. And that is what myself and my team promises to provide if given the opportunity to form the next executive of the DOC. 
Marpin Sports reached out to President of DOC, Felix Wilson, for an interview before the elections. However, Wilson said he does not wish to make a comment on the matter. Wilson has served as President of DOC for two terms, once between 1997 to 2000, then again from 2013 to present. He was out of the DOC between 2001 and 2009. On to football, where national coach Rajesh Lachu believes every athlete on the trial squad will get their fair shot at making the national team. He says he did not include two of the overseas-based players ahead of the friendly match in Guadeloupe for a reason. So the final team basically from this game, after this game we'll be calling back the two players from Trinidad for the Grenada tournament. We didn't call them back because I wanted to give these guys who were training here their fair shot at the, making the team. Um, we cut down the team to 21, only 20 players will be on the squad, one player will not be able to play. When we come back, we had a couple injuries, you know, so when we come back, those guys will be invited to train going into Grenada because we have some talented players, young players, so this is for some of them getting their feet wet. We have at least six people getting the first cap on the senior team and we look now to see how do they deal with this tough opponent. Are they ready now? Are they going to be ready in three months? Do they need six months? Because ultimately, with the win World Tournament and with this practice match, we are using this to prepare for next year. Next year is CONCACAF. Lachu says the Dominican team needs to have improved performance ahead of the CONCACAF Cup. We have no Caribbean Cup again. So the last 10 will play the first 10. We're not in the, we're not, we're not in the first 10. So we need to use this year to get out of the last 10. Once we could get out of the last 10, we would now be in a better position to, to go further in the CONCACAF Cup. But regardless, we're preparing to play teams like Mexico and Costa Rica. That is how we train. That is the mentality of the players. Moving on to cricket, India will tour the West Indies for five ODIs and one T20 international in June and July, with the trip beginning almost immediately after the Champions Trophy final in England. The Champions Trophy final is scheduled for June 18, and the first ODI between India and West Indies is set for June 23 at Trinidad's Queen Park Oval. The second ODI is at Queen's Park Oval as well, before the teams move to Antigua for the next two matches. The last ODI and the T20 will be played at Sabina Park on July 6 and 9. Unlike India, West Indies are not part of the Champions Trophy and will be hosting Afghanistan while the top eight ranked ODI nations compete in the ICC tournament in England. This will be the fourth bilateral series between the sides since 2013. Sports continues with this item where veteran cyclist Hayden Mills described a recent training exercise as vigorous yet rewarding. Mills, along with two other cyclists, successfully completed 100 miles of riding leading up to the OECS Cycling Championships later this year. He says this is the first time that this has been done here. It took the opportunity for Mr. Levi Benji and myself to do 100 miles of riding this morning, which was very good. We look at men since last week to do it, so it's like we were prepared mentally. And that was another great goal about it because it's only a 50 year for something, no matter how hard it is, you to um, overcome it. And Mr. Levi decided we're going for it, and Benji already is a old veteran, he decided we're going for it. And you know, it wasn't too bad because a little rain fall now and then helped us out. But after that, in the last four rounds, the sun was really hot, so you know, it was really rough. But anyway, we make it that you get some Our main thing is we're going to try to work together. And then I think if we work together, we can try our best to at least come out in the first five if we can win. But you know, we try our best to win. Dominica will host the 2017 OECS Cycling Championships on the 2nd of July. Cyclists will compete in an approximately 70 mile long race. Next up, basketball action returns to the bird's nest in Pichner with two games on Thursday night. At 7, Ronald Charles All-Stars will be looking to outshine the old-school team. At 9, PSC Falcons will have home advantage when they take on LA Knights. Finally in sports, national sprinter Mitchell Davis fell short of rewriting the record in the men's 100-meter event by just 0.21 seconds, but still finished way ahead of second place in a recent track meet in Martinique. Davis won the race crossing the line in a meet record time of 10.54 seconds in the 100-meter event and got his season's best in the 200 meters in a time of 21.12 seconds. Well, things didn't go as planned in the 100 meters. I won both the 100 and the 200 meters. I was planning on breaking the national record in the 100, which I missed. 
Uh, but I ran a season's best in the 200 meters to compensate that. I ran 21.12, my fastest time for the season. The races didn't go as planned, and I was actually surprised with the 200 meter time. But I still give God thanks for my performance. I am still looking forward to breaking the, the 100 meter national record this season. Davis's fastest time in the 100 meter event is 10.44 seconds. However, the national record still eludes him at 10.33 seconds. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Your midweek weather forecast is next. Hello, good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'll be your presenter for this evening, Farah Rock Career. We move on now to some early infrared satellite imagery. And what is of interest to us in the Lesser Antilles is the high pressure system, which was a dominant feature today, which resulted in a relatively dry and stable atmosphere. We move on now to some earlier visible satellite imagery. And what it showed is some low level clouds as well as some high level clouds in the area. And earlier radar imagery indicated a few scattered showers across across the Lesser Antilles. The weather tonight is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy with a few scattered showers of course. Breezy conditions are expected as well. And the weather for tomorrow fair to occasionally cloudy, slightly hazy, breezy with a few scattered showers mainly during the morning period of course. Relatively warm temperatures is expected. Maximum temperatures of up to 33 degrees Celsius is expected. Well, small craft operators and civilians, please do exercise caution. The sea conditions tomorrow will be moderate and waves are expected to peak up to 8 feet. Let's move on now to the three-day forecast. Well, tomorrow, Thursday, as I said, fair to occasionally cloudy, slightly hazy, breezy with a few scattered showers, mainly during the morning period with relatively warm temperatures. And a tropical wave will be moving across the area by Friday. Therefore, it will start off as partly cloudy and will become increasingly cloudy with some scattered showers and that weather will persist into the earlier part of Saturday where it will start off as cloudy with some scattered showers and by afternoon it will be fair to occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers. Let's move on now to the Caribbean forecast. Well, fair to occasionally cloudy skies are expected across the Lesser Antilles with relatively warm temperatures expected for most of the islands. Well, let's take a look now at the international city forecast. Well, like us, relatively warm temperatures expected in the city of Beijing. Maximum temperatures are expected to peak up to 38 degrees Celsius tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies expected for the cities of New York and Caracas. Thunderstorms expected in Miami and cloudy skies expected across the city of London. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.35 a.m. and will set at 6.28 p.m. For more information, you could always visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. To end the news, the headlines again. Two trade unions invited to another round of salary negotiations with government. Parliamentary opposition interested in marijuana as an economic development tool for the country and tourism authorities target a 5% growth for the next tourist season. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also watch our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona John Baptist. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.